Hey guys, so in this video we're going to introduce the idea of torque, which is the rotational equivalent of force. Let's check it out. Alright, so you can think of torque as a twist that a force gives an object around an axis of rotation. So here's the most classic example. If you have a door that is fixed around an axis here, this is the hinge of the door, which is also its axis of rotation, meaning the door is free to rotate around the axis. And if you push this way with a force F, it causes the door to spin this way. I'm going to say that the door accelerates in that direction. It gains an alpha. Okay? Um, so when you push on a door, it rotates around its hinges. So more generally speaking, when a force acts an object, as it does here, away from its axis, it produces a torque on it. So let's talk about these two parts. Away from the axis. If you push on a door here, it doesn't actually cause spinning. I'm going to say alpha equals zero, right? If you try to push a door by pushing on its, if you try to open a door by pushing on the hinge, it doesn't spin. You have to be away from the axis of rotation. And then it produces a torque. So this is the idea that a force causes a torque, which causes an acceleration, okay? So what you're doing, you're not doing, you're not uh, producing a torque, you're producing a force which then results in a torque um, on that object, okay? So now the other point is that a force may produce a torque. We already talked about how if you push here, it doesn't cause it to rotate so you don't produce a torque. So force may or may not produce a torque and a torque may or may not produce a rotation, an angular acceleration. Um, and that's, let's say, if you're pushing this way, but then someone else, um, F2, is pushing this way, and these two cancel out. In that case, you wouldn't really produce them, okay? But the most important point I want to make is that you have F produces a T, which produces an alpha. That's the sequence, okay? And we just talked about this. Let's fill it in here. Similar to forces cause linear acceleration, remember, sum of all forces equals MA. Uh, sum of all forces, as long as you have a, a net force, you're going to have an acceleration. It's the same thing with torques. Torques cause angular acceleration. We're not going to talk about that just yet, um, alpha. We're going to talk about this a little bit later. Okay. Now, another difference between torque and force is that force is a straightforward number. If I tell you we push with 10, that's the end of it. But for torques, torque depends on how hard you push. It depends on how far you push and some other stuff. So. Uh, we actually have an equation for torque. You don't have an equation for force. You're given a force, but for a torque, you have to calculate it. And it is FR sine of theta. FR sine of theta. Where F is the force you push with, it's a vector. R is a vector. It says here R is a vector from the axis of rotation to the point where the force is applied. Remember, little r in most rotation problems has to do with distance from the center. It's the same thing here, okay? Now, theta, theta is the angle between these two vectors. See these two vectors right here, f and r? Theta is simply the angle between those two guys. Theta, whoops, f and r. I meant to put an f and an r. And one thing I like to do is I like to think of like an arrow pointing towards these two guys here, right? And that's to remind me that in that equation, the theta is the angle between the F and the R, the two guys that are hanging out next to the theta, okay? Theta is the angle between these two guys. Now, the unit for force is newtons. The, newton for, the units for distance R is meters. So a torque is measured in newton times meter, okay? That's the units for torque. One last point that I want to make here is that when we, to maximize the torque, to get the most possible torque, Another way to think about this is the way to uh, apply the least amount of force and get the most amount of results to be the most efficient with causing something to rotate is to apply the force as far as possible and perpendicular. And apply the force perpendicular, perpendicular to the R vector. Perpendicular means 90 degrees. It's got the little perpendicular symbol um, to the R vector. So what does that mean? So let's draw the R vector real quick on this picture here. The R vector is from the axis of the rotation, which is here, to the point where the force is applied, which is over here. This is the R vector. You want your force to make, this is your force, 
you want your force to make 90 degrees with the vector, which in this case it does. Um, that's how you get the maximum torque, the easiest way to rotate. Imagine if you're instead pushing the door this way, right? This would be a little bit weaker. Um, it, you have to push harder to get the same rotation. So you want to push at an angle of 90 degrees. The other thing is that you want to push as far as possible away um, from the axis of rotation. So you've all opened doors before. If you try to open a door by pushing on it, let's say right here, right? I'm going to make a little bit of a mess, but I'm going to erase this. Um, if you push right here, it's much harder to open a door here than to open a door at the end. In fact, that's why the doorknob is on the opposite side of the hinge because that's where you're supposed to push. It's easiest, okay? So, and you can relate that directly to the equation, right? So if you want the torque to be as, as high as possible, you obviously want to push as much as hard as you can, as far away or as distance from the axis, um, as far away as you can, and you want to maximize sine of theta. Now let me remind you that sine and cosine fluctuates between negative one and one, right? So it looks like that. So the greatest possible value of sine you can have is one. Now where does this happen? This happens when theta is zero. I'm sorry, when theta is 90. Sine of 90 is one. That's why, if you look at the equation, that's why you get the greatest possible value for torque, okay? So again, your torque is max when you push as far away from the edge as possible, and when you push perpendicular, making a 90 degree angle with the R vector. All right, now let's do an example. Uh, we're going to use three steps to, font to solve all of these torque questions. We're gonna draw the R vector, you're gonna figure out what your theta is, and then you're gonna plug numbers into an equation, okay? And here I have five different forces just to show you all the different variations. So you push on, you push or pull on a three meter wide door. So the length of this door here, uh, let me actually just write length equals three meters, um, with 10 newtons in a bunch of different ways. So all of these forces are 10. Um, we wanna calculate the torque that each force produces on this door. And then the rest is just explaining that F1, F4, and F5 all act on the edge of the door right here. In other words, they act at a distance of three from the axis. This guy is halfway through the door, and this guy is at the hinge. So I'm going to write in all this information here. I'm going to say this is 1.5 meters. Um, the rest here is 1.5 as well, so the whole thing is three. Uh, what else? It says that F5 is directed 60 degrees below the x-axis. So if you do this, this guy is 60 degrees right there. So I got all the information. Let's do this. Torque one, remember the equation, is just F1, R1, sine of theta one. Okay, the force is 10, but I gotta figure out the R and I gotta figure out the sine. So the first thing you do, here are the three steps, you're gonna draw the R vector, okay? So the R vector is from the point where the axis is to the point where the force happens. The force happens right here. So the R vector for force one looks like this, okay? So I'm gonna say that this is my R1. And how long is R1? It's three meters, so three meters, okay? Now sine is, the angle is the angle between um, R and F, okay? F1 is this way. Let me actually draw this down here. F1 is this way, and R1 is this way. The angle between these two guys is simply 90 degrees. I'm gonna put it here. And remember, the sine of 90 is one. I actually need you to remember that. That's gonna make your life easier. But if you forget, just check in the calculator real quick. So this is gonna be 10 times three times one, which is 30, and the unit is Newton meter, 30 Newton meter. Cool, we're gonna do this uh, four more times. Um, so T2, again, F2, R2, sine of theta two. The force is 10. I like to leave spaces for R and theta. So what do you think the R is here, right? So what would the R vector look like? I want you to draw that real quick and tell me how long that R vector is. And I hope you're thinking that it is two meters, sorry, 1.5 meters, um, because it's just half, right? So R2 looks like this. This is R2, I'm gonna draw it down here so I don't make a huge mess. Um, actually, let me put it here as well. R2 looks like that, okay? And the force is F2 right here, and the angle between them is also 90 degrees, okay?
Okay. Now we'll talk a little bit more about angles because there's some places where it might get confusing, but for now we're just going to keep going. If you multiply everything, the answer is 15 Newton meter. So right away you see how when you pushed farther, which was in the first uh, situation, you got a bigger torque than when you pushed uh, closer to the edge. All right, let's keep going. What about torque three? F3, which is 10 R sine of theta. What do you think the R vector looks like here? And what do you think the length of the vector is? So I hope as you're thinking about this, you're thinking, well, if you push at the hinge, it doesn't really move at all. So the torque should be zero. There is no, you're not producing anything that causes acceleration, you're not causing acceleration. And that's correct. And that's because the R vector is going to have a length of zero, okay? The R is the distance between, you can't even draw it. It would look like this, right? That this is like your R3, it's a dot. Because it's from the axis of rotation, which is here, to where the force acts, which is also here. So there's no distance because it's the same two points, okay? In that case, it doesn't even matter what the sign is. You can't even do technically draw a sign because there's no arrows to, um, there's no arrows for you to figure out what the angle between them is. Um, so it doesn't matter, this is just zero, and that's because you act on the axis. Whenever you act on the axis, torque is zero, end of story. Okay, now what about torque four? It's 10 R sine of theta. What do you think the R vector hit here is? So, and how long is it, right? So the R vector for four, four acts over here, so the R vector is the same one as this guy here. This is R1, and this is the same as R4. The length of this vector is the entire length of the door, which is three. So far, so good. What about the angle, right? What do you think you put for the angle? And do you think there's a torque here? Um, so the second question might be easier to answer. If you pull on a door in the direction of F4, the door doesn't move, side, the door doesn't open or close, right? The door doesn't spin. So you should expect that the torque is zero. And it is actually zero. But the reason why that happens in terms of the equation um, you can see this in the equation, it's because your R vector looks like this. This is R4, and this is your force four, okay? The angle between these two guys is zero degrees. They're both going in the same direction, right? Um, if you got this wrong and you thought that the angle is 180, that's okay, you got the same answer. But the angle is zero degrees, and that's because you can put them sort of side by side, um, and you can see how the angle is zero, okay? So the angle here is zero degrees, and if you do sine of zero, the answer is zero, all right? And the last one, T5, it's at an angle. The force is 10. How long is the R vector? And what is the angle that we use? So again, T5 is at a distance of three. So this vector here, the long arrow, is the same for all, all three of these guys. Um, what about the angle? The angle has to be, be careful here, right? A lot of torque problems will give you an angle and people will just sort of blindly put a 60 here and sometimes that's wrong, they do that on purpose. So you gotta watch out for that. Um, you should actually assume that they're trying to trick you and, and make sure that you're using the correct angle, okay? So how do you know this? And I'm gonna draw this, I'm gonna draw R5 right here. This is where you slow down, make sure you do this correctly. And I'm gonna draw F5 here and here is the 60. Is that the angle between those two? And the technique that I like to use is to make it where the two arrows point from the same dot. I want to have something like this, F and R, because then it's easy to confirm that this is in fact the angle. Now to do this, what I do is I shift the arrow around. So for example, see this R5 right here? I'm going to move it, I'm going to move it this way. I haven't changed the direction of the R5, I'm just shifting it from pointing into the dot to coming out of the dot. It's the same thing. But the nice thing about this is that it becomes very easy to see that this angle is in fact the one between F5 and R5 um, because I have the two vectors like this and it's just the angle between them, cool? So sometimes you're gonna do a lot of this shifting um, to make sure that the angle that they gave you was the correct angle, okay? Um, so for example, if they had said 30 here, it wouldn't be the correct angle the correct angle is instead the angle between the R and the F, which is 60. So that's good, sine of 60 goes here. Um, the, and then if you multiply this whole thing, you get 26, I'm rounding it 26 Newton meters as the answer, cool? It's really important that you know how to calculate torques. You should make sure you understood this and you can do all, all five of these things on your own, all right? Well, this is just the beginning, we're gonna do a tons more, ton more stuff, but you gotta make sure 
you know how to calculate basic torques. Let's keep going.